Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be adding randomized door generation. So a bunch of doors like the actual game will randomly generate, but there will always be the same first door. So let's start. Starting off, we should probably make a folder in replicated storage, which is gonna hold all of the rooms that we want capable of being generated here. So I'm just gonna name this set parts because we're gonna be setting each part to a certain door number so now obviously we can make our room so we can make I'm gonna make my room pretty simple as right now I'm not going for detail but I will be adding some detail pretty soon you can make these doors or rooms as big long or whatever as you want so I'm just going to add in all of these walls just like so and now something that you should add is let's duplicate this and let's change the size to just a little small square something like this and now with this small square let's put this at the start and the center of our floor or wherever you're going to put your door put this at the center or right in between the door and then we can name this start point I'm going to make it green and then I'm going to make it slightly transparent and not collide now we can duplicate this and we can put this at the end of our room but this time we're gonna put it outside of the floor and now we can name this endpoint and we can make this red so make sure you have this on every one of your doors and on the first door what you can do is make sure you only have the door for one side or don't have the endpoint wall as when we put in another so let's say we have a wall here if we put this building so let's say we copy this and we put this right on the green point if we have a wall here it's automatically going to put in place a door right here so we're not going to have to add an end wall if that makes sense so what we can do is i'm going to just lost the place nope or actually yes i have we can create some walls I'm going to create a simple little door frame. Don't have to do too much. Just something like this. And yeah, make sure that it's in the center of the door. And then you can group the model. I'm just going to name this room one. And then go to the primary part and set the primary part to the start point. So once we set the primary parts position to the end point, it'll basically move up to here. Or well, the whole model is going to move up and it'll look something like this. As you can see, two rooms. So now you can go ahead and make as many rooms as you want. I will cut back once I've finished making maybe two more different types of rooms. So yeah, I'll be back. Alright guys, so instead of making two more rooms, I decided just to make one more room, which is a curved room, just to show the difference between this room and this room. And yes, as you can see, I put the end point at the end, I moved it over here to where I want the next room to be generating from. So make sure you do that. So now what we can do is, we can rename our room 1 to just 1 and we can put room one and room two make sure these are both grouped and that their end and start or their primary parts are set and then you can put this into replicated storage where the set parts are now we can get onto the scripting of the generation so in service script service hit the plus and insert a script we're going to name this generate rooms so the first variable we're going to make is a variable for how many rooms you want so local rooms will equal and for now i guess i'll just make 50 rooms as for a, next, a later video we're going to be making a specific door or room for what a, a specific room number just like how in doors room 50 is the library every time we're going to be making something like that so now we want to get the parts folder which will be this folder right here so local parts f for folder equals game not replicated storage and let's do wait for child set parts 
So we're making a variable and then we're assigning it to game.replicated storage, which is something in the game. And we're gonna wait for a child to be added. This makes sure, or this waits for this to load into the game before assigning it to the variable. So it's gonna wait for something called set parts and replicated storage, and then assign that into a variable. Now we're going to get the amount of rooms or we're going to get all of the rooms inside of this folder. So local parts, we should actually name this to local rooms. And then I'm just going to put a for amount and then I'm going to put rooms F for folder. So rooms amount equals rooms folder get children. So this is just going to get all of the children that are inside of the folder. And so whatever the object is inside of that is the parent of that object and whatever is inside of this folder can be called a child i'm not too sure how to explain that but these are children of this folder and this folder is the parent of both of these children so now we want to get the rooms that are already inside of the game so local already rooms equals workspace wait for child rooms you can also do game.workspace, but you can just keep it simple and keep it workspace. So we're making a variable, which is waiting for another child in workspace that is called rooms, which is another folder. Now what we're going to do is make a loop. So we're going to make a 4i equals 1 and then rooms loop. Basically, this loop it starts with one and this number is going to constantly increase until it reaches this number. So let's say rooms was, or yeah, let's say rooms is 50. So it's the same thing as typing 50. This is going to repeat 50 times until this number reaches that. So we first have to actually add onto the I. So I plus equals one. And then we're just gonna change this back to rooms, just like so. So now we're going to select a random room that is inside of the rooms folder. And let's actually rename set parts to rooms or set rooms just to make more sense. sense. And then we must change this in our variable. So now in our loop, we have to make a selected part. So let's make a variable just called selected part equals, and then we're going to do math dot random zero or actually one and then the number of rooms or of the number of children in this folder so we're making a variable called selected part and we're going to get a math dot random which is a random number this is the minimum number it can pick from and then when we put this hashtag here it's counting the number of children that are inside of the folder so if we have two it's like putting two right here but we're doing this so we can have like 50 and we won't have to keep changing this every time we add a new room. So it's going to get a random number between 1 and 2. And now we want to get the chosen room. And actually, I keep name this. We should just select the room. Local chosen room equals rooms folder. Wait for child. And then we're going to put room. And then two dots, which is a continuation. And then selected and we're going to do two string selected room so what this is doing is it's getting it's making a variable getting the rooms folder variable up here waiting for a child that starts with the word room and then we're changing this number into a string so a number is just a regular number a string is like a text just like that in the quotations so we're going to change the number into a string. So it's like room one like this, except we're able to use a variable for it. Since this is going to be setting this variable to a number, we're going to have to change it into a string. So what this would be, let's say selected room is one. This is going to be room continuing and then one. And this, so you can add multiple values to a string or to a text or to really anything so this is gonna help us choose our room so it's completely randomized now we actually have to put the room into the game so it works so first we're gonna clone this chosen room 
so local new room equals chosen room clone so this is like right clicking on one of the rooms and pressing duplicate now we have to set its parent so new room dot parent and we want to put this in rooms so we already have the already rooms so equals already rooms so now we can actually see it but we haven't set its position yet so if we just bring it into workspace it's still going to stay inside of this part so now what we want to do is get the amount of rooms that are already in the map so local in game rooms equals already rooms get children so similar to what we did up here getting the children from this folder we're going to get it from this already rooms folder or the rooms folder that's in workspace and now we're going to set the new rooms name to a singular number which is going to be to string number of in-game rooms and then plus one so this is going so if there's one door or room then the new room that we're adding is going to be called one plus one which will be two so let's see if i can if it's going to work so i could show an example real quick of what it's doing <coughs> so if i go into here yeah it's gonna bug out because i not only forgot to anchor it but as you can see the numbers are all changing because we're calculating how many root doors there already are and then assigning the new door or room to one number higher. This is just so we can keep track of all the rooms and we can modify specific number rooms like deleting room 50 and replacing it with a better room or a more advanced room. So now that we've set its parent and now that we've made its name change, we can set the primary the primary part that we assigned each model to earlier so what we're gonna do is new room set primary part so this allows us to set this primary part and what we're going to be setting it to is actually we should set its c frame c frame stands for coordinate frame and that's basically its position on the map so what we're going to do is get our already rooms folder and we're gonna wait for a child with the same name as this number so the number of in-game rooms and then the endpoint because if you remember we put an endpoint in each one of our rooms and then position or we should probably keep that as C frame as we're setting primary part C frame so this should set the new room to be in front of the previous room that was added to the game so let's go ahead and see if all of this works. So let this load. Endpoint is not a valid member of rooms.1. So let's see that. Oh yeah, we did not add a number one to our starting room. So in our starting room, let's just go ahead and add in a little cube. Actually, I'm just going to copy it straight from the other room. Put it into workspace. Take it over here. And we can just center that right around here, just like so. Place it a little bit more in the center, and then put it into number one. Now, what we should be able to do is load it up. I should probably anchor everything before my studio crashes. So let's just go ahead and anchor. And now I'm going to hit play. That endpoint might not be anchored, which might be a problem. Problem. but now everything should be randomly generated as you can see so if we open this door there's a little bit of a gap here because I didn't completely center it but as you can see the green point is exactly where the other red point used to be so if we walk down this hallway as you can see exactly there and now we have a bunch of randomly generated doors and we should have a total of 50 doors to walk through so I'm just going to increase my walk speed to like 100 just to get through all these doors much quicker but yeah 
that's how we can add randomly generated doors to our game in the next episode we can add some more like unique doors like maybe doors going up or down like staircases and we can add our special doors at certain numbers at like door 50 we can have a different room at door 100 just like the actual game so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully it was helpful and yeah see ya